I feel the power of art is to take the science and the data and create an emotional response and a message. I take all the data, I take the research and then I reinterpret and it comes out as an installation, a dance, an album. My name is Diana Scarborough, I'm a multimedia artist and I work at the interface between art and science. I've worked with a lot of institutions, primarily in Cambridge. Right now I'm sitting in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology and they look at the nano scale of things. I have done a lot of work recently with British Antarctic Survey and then we're looking at the cosmos and I'm working with a space weather scientist. And again, I think it's the wonder of their research and making that invisible visible is, inspires me. What I want is to combine the authenticity and truth of science and having the freedom to make it into something that hasn't been seen before. When we present to the public, there is an art and a science and a Q&A. And we've taken this package and we've delivered it in a bar, music festivals, in a science lab, in a concert hall. And so the power of bringing in new audiences through art, through spectacle, to actually have a discussion, you know, that I see that's what my role is, to start a conversation, and basically make people feel safe enough to ask questions. I met Diana when I moved to Cambridge. We met at one of the events aimed to put scientists and artists together to work on a little project. I'm Liliana Fruk. I am Associate Professor of Bio-Nanotechnology at the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology in Cambridge. We are actually using bio-inspired nanomaterials and we try to employ them to design more sustainable processes in chemical industry but also to design new materials for smart drug delivery. So I've always liked the aesthetics of science. So throughout my career, I love to work with artists and professionals from other fields to get some new ideas and to also discover new ways of using our own materials beyond medicine and beyond chemical industry. By having Diana in my lab and joining us as an artist in residence, first of all, we just want to have a little bit more of creative fun. Because we work with nanomaterials, it makes our research more accessible. But it also gives my research team a little bit more insight into questions they wouldn't normally ask themselves. Nanoscale, which is very, very small, is hidden. How do you make that into important visual work that is beyond just illustration? It's that emotional response in combination with facts that makes a difference. I've just been given some magnetic nanoparticles. So my interest in sound as a palette, as well as the visuals and the media, is can I make these dance? Can I make these magnetic nanoparticles dance? Can we film them? What would happen if we played them some rock and roll or a bit of Beethoven? Here in this lab they have the opportunity for me to see what is happening. Okay, it's not an answer, it's a process. As a result of that it can be an animation, it could be anything, but what will happen when sound and the nano meet? What am I going to see? How can I work with that? And that becomes the raw material. I absolutely love what I do. The power of art is, is that emotional punch, the ability to put a message in there, a call to action, something that's beyond the dryness sometimes that scientists and researchers are bound by.